everybody. Welcome to Face to Face. We are so glad that you are able to join us. I'm here with Daniel D'Amico, Polly Kloster, and Shelley Erickson, and we welcome you here. Uh, we're going to be reading from Romans 12. It's just a chapter that is so packed full of lots of different things we could discuss. Uh, but before we do that, we would like to invite the Holy Spirit into this process. So I would ask Shelley if you would please pray for us as we begin. Sure, I'd be glad to. Thank you. Thank you. Good and gracious Lord, thank you for gathering us together on this this day uh, to hear your word, to hear from your Holy Spirit. We just ask you, Lord, that your spirit stir within us and stir within the people who are listening. And it be your truths um, that are spoken and revealed to us on this day. We thank you and we love you, Jesus. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, we're in our theme of Better Together, and this uh, chapter 12 of Romans really drives a lot of different points home for that theme. And so I'm going to read, uh, not the whole chapter, but we're going to start with verse 1 and go through 16. And I'm reading out of the NIV version, um, so follow along if you can. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. Just as each of us has one body with many members and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we who are many form one body and each member belongs to all others. Each member belongs to all others. I love that. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him pro let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. It if, is, if it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it, if it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is the leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good, be devoted to one another in brotherly love, honor one another above yourselves, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need, practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Give in, live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Well, that's the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, there is so much there to unpack. Uh, where should we begin? <laughs> uh, um, I just thought it was... It's kind of almost feels to me like a checklist for people who are uh, trying to come together as church or as people of Christ. And um, I just found this little um, rundown here of the qualities of that Paul is extolling upon us. Love, passion, heavenly minded, hospitable, forgiving, encouraging, other centered, upright, peaceful, patient, generous. <clears throat> excuse me, and then uh, victorious is the last, because in verse 21, he says, uh, we overcome evil with good, so we are victorious. So on all of the list of all of those attributes, uh, what do you think? How easy is that to keep? <laughs> so I'm going to start out. So the first, in the very first verse you read, um, therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy. And to me, that's the filter for all of these things that Paul has laid out um, and what Jesus did for us by his death and his resurrection. And that in view of God's mercy, 
this is now, I didn't look at it as a checklist as much as it's becoming part of our, part of our DNA because of what Jesus did. Um, and we can't do it on our own. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I can't just go out on my own and, and show love and mercy. And um, it has to be through God's mercy. It has to be through God's grace mm-hmm. um, that, that, that it happens. Mm-hmm. So for me, I look at it as what Jesus did for us, his death going to the cross for us, but then his resurrection, all of that sin and everything was buried with him. Mm-hmm. It died on that, it died on that cross. And now it's through his mercies and his grace that we live, can hopefully live into these things that Paul's um laid before us, I guess. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it if we try to make it a checklist and go, okay, well, I'm gonna try to be more loving or I'm going to try to be hospitable and and make it a, something that is the onus is on us to make it, um, we're gonna fall short. But I I love that what you're saying, Shelley, is that it's a response to the mercy that we've been given. And it's yeah, it's inward. It's not something outward that we just try to check off a checklist. And I think our humanists, we all <clears throat> We all do that. We make resolutions on the first you know, January one and all these things we want to check off. But this is beyond us. We can't do this on our own. Mm-hmm. Well, and I like um, to think about that living sacrifice. When you think about sacrifices in the Old Testament, it was sacrificing animals. For, it was a different kind of a sacrifice. And so here, the conversation of a living sacrifice um, really comes reminds us of Christ as the sacrificial lamb and that our sacrifice as a living sacrifice is to sacrifice those things that we would do through sin and choose to do positive deeds and actions to, to emulate and be more like Christ and what he wants. And so those are our sacrifices in Christ. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I find that, you know, in that first couple of verses, you know, verse two, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by renewing of your mind. So like that, just that is very, is very packed with um, personal transformation mm-hmm. and, and an ongoing, like the renewing of your mind. You don't renew something one time, yes. you renew it ongoing. You, right. you, 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 you know, you don't get to check the book out one time and it's yours. If you do, you pay a lot of penalties. <laughs> like the idea is that you continue to renew, you continue to, um, to invest to sac and continue to sacrifice. So, uh, and then the, the conforming to this world, like that is a, that is something I think everybody struggles with on some level, uh, whether it's your, whether it's a spiritual thing or a, a physical thing, this to try to, get out of some of the of the negativity that happens and renew your mind over and over and over again um and that to me is not a checklist that that part isn't a checklist that is a that is a mission statement for lack of a better word that is the thing we must do all the time because checklist to me it's like you get it you're done move on you're done right so let me read to you from the message um the header is place your life before god Mm -hmm. So it says, so here's what I want you to do. God helping you take your everyday ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work and walking around life and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out, readily recognizing what he wants from you and quickly responding to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It kind of puts it in perspective that it is renewing, like you said, Daniel, it's not just a one and done. It's in your everyday life. It's in your waking. It's in your sleeping. It's in your actions. It's in everything. It's a constant renewal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's in God and because of God, Mm -hmm. not because of what we like to do or what we think our power to do. It's it's God's mercy. It's Mm -hmm. God's grace. And when we keep ourselves planted in that, then we can, it says, just test and approve what is God's will, Mm -hmm. Um, do what God wants. And so often we wonder, well, what's God's will in this? But it, and then it also points out it's his good and pleasing and perfect will that whatever Mm -hmm. God does wants from us is perfect. Um, So, but then there's, there's this, in this book, 
there's then the transition from what you do as an individual to yourself, spiritually, mentally renewing. But then there's a quick call to, but you're part of something bigger. Mm-hmm. Not just not just uh, 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 you're part of God's family. You're part of a community, a, a community that that needs and has strengths and has weaknesses. And, you know, we, we talk about this, you know, like as we continue to e- evolve or, you know, as a person, you're always learning, you're always growing. Part of that learning and growing is finding out what you're not so good at um, and being OK sometimes in that. And that's what this next section is, is that we all have different strengths and weaknesses, but we are. Um, we are able to lean into those strengths and let other people lean into their strengths. Um, so I, I, it's an interesting, it's a, it starts off by what saying what, what we need to do as individuals and then what we need to do as individuals in a larger body and how we can, yes. how we can help each other. That's one of them. I think that is the, po- that is it. Yeah. That's, mm-hmm. that is the point of this. Yeah. And it brings me back to um, the body, mm-hmm. the whole, the body of Christ that, each we each need to use our God-given gifts mm-hmm. because we're not complete. <laughs> the body's not complete without everyone using those gifts that God has given. Mm-hmm. I was uh, listening to something on on this text, and it talked about how we want to be socks, and uh, rather than just be a toe, you know, we want to we are called to be part of the body but some of us just want to be socks that can be put on but then taken off when they're not needed <laughs> and not necessarily attached i mean but can sort of think of themselves as part of the body i thought that was a a humorous way to put it <laughs> that is that's funny don't, don't be a sock <laughs> <laughs> well it said in here and i know now i can't find it but that it said we belong to each other mm-hmm. um, and Again, this idea that we can't do it alone. We've read it together, but yet and uh, we have to recognize and celebrate each other's gifts and not, not compare our gifts with one another, but mm-hmm. celebrate what we can contribute to the body. So, And I love, um, love the, the titles, love, love in Action. Because mm-hmm. I think the first part of this is what God has done to us, we're one body, um, we're better together, but then it moves us to action. The love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good, mm-hmm. be devoted to one another in love. All those, you know, verbs. Mm-hmm. And we can't do that without God. And we can't do that, to your point, Daniel, without each other. Right. Mm-hmm. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor. What do you think about that? I don't know what those words mean. <laughs> <laughs> Zeal and fervor. I, I, they, I, I mean, I literally, as we're walking, we're reading through, I was like, I don't, I don't know what those words mean. <laughs> Holly, do you still have the message there? What would, how does he paraphrase that? I do. Um, <clears throat> let's see. And so we're in, but you know, they, they don't, yeah, they don't match up, up in terms know. of the numbers, but it says, um, okay. It says, don't burn out, keep yourselves fueled and aflame. Mm. Be alert servants of the master, cheerfully expectant. Don't quit in hard times, pray all the harder. Help needy Christians be inventive in hospitality. Oh, I love that. Isn't that great? (laughs) Oh, wow, yeah. I think that's the zeal and fervor, Daniel. Be inventive, be creative, be a fire. Don't burn, like, out, don't, don't burn out. Don't burn out. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that's what I. That's what I took was was the the the, the zeal is great, but also you know the, like, and when we were, was it last week we were talking about Moses, right? Moses as the as the judge of all things, and his father in law goes, "Yeah, you can't do that. Yeah, it's not good for you. It's not good for them. What whether you think it is or not." And that's a reminder as 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 we try to do all things, we can't. And and we're not called to do all things, right? Right. And we're not called to do all things. And that's so that that even goes. So it gives you this list of like, be part of the body. And then when the body, the rest of the body can lift you up, step back as you need to, to rejuvenate or or to, to get your energy. Because if you do something that in, in exhaustion or whatever, we don't do it up to our best. Mm-hmm. And um, so that's, that's, uh, it's an interesting, this is just a great like continuation of, you know, mm-hmm. uh, of how we are to be. Yes, and comes I, back to I the need to renew our minds. I'm sorry, we don't Polly, need more minds. We can't do it. 
Yeah. Renewal I think I spoke over you, Polly. I'm sorry. Can you say that again? Oh, I just said that goes back to the renewal of our minds. We can't continue to do that and have that same zeal and energy if we aren't constantly renewing our minds in him. Right. Mm -hmm. right. When I read the word zeal, I thought of it as saying we need to have a little bit of a sense of urgency here, <laughs> you know, and uh, get, you know, if you're passionate about it, you know, have spiritual fervor, you know, be have a sense of urgency. I don't know any other way to put it, but that's what I, was I like that. And I think we can, at least I have that more when I'm in community, I need my time of uh -huh. solitude and refreshment, but God's calling us to action. And that action happens when you gather all these people with their gifts mm -hmm. that creates a certain God given energy. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I, you know, we're better together. Mm -hmm. You can't do it on your own, Lori. Polly, you can't. I can't. Daniel, you can't. All of you listening out there, you can't do it on your own. Um, we need each other, and we need we need God. And I think that speaks so. This chapter twelve of Romans speaks so clearly to that again. Because I've tried to do it on my own, and I do burn out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Me too. Yeah, but we're not good about asking. Right. No. I'm terrible at delegating. Other people for help, we feel like we need to. And that's that's the important part of it is recognizing that, you know, what you said before, Shelly, we aren't made to do it alone. Yeah. Um, and there's no shame in asking for help. Well, and we're not allowing someone else to use their gifts when we think we can do it all on our own. Mm -hmm. We're not lifting up God's given mm -hmm. talents in another person when we think we can we can just get this done or just do it. Mm -hmm. The right. definition it's the Moses approach. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the definition of zeal is great energy or enthusiasm in pursuit of a cause or an objective. Hmm. Um, but in the, the other, so so there's so the idea. I mean, it's it's some things we've talked about. Is if we're going to do it, we're going let's do it. Let's let's lean into it. Let's do it to the fullest. And then when we're done, pull back and hmm. figure out how to rest and, and rejuvenate. I mean, the you know there's. We all we all find energy in different ways. Some people find energy by being with people. Some people find their energy by finding solitude. And we all have our personalities all have the, on the spectrum. We all need some element of that. Some mm -hmm. people need more solitude than than or you know than than the 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 uh, extrovert. You know mm -hmm. some some people need more less solitude. And so like finding that balance is very important. And we're willing to tell other people's find the balance. You need to find you need to find your rest. We're not so good at doing it for ourselves, but in that rest is the is the ask of that God is commanding to renew your mind, mm -hmm. not just mm -hmm. not just rest physically, but you know uh, mm -hmm. rest and, and renew your mind and your spirit. Uh, and and we're good mm -hmm. at some of those things. Like a nap is great, a nap is wonderful, but what are you doing to renew your mind and and how can, how that helps not just us but our community at large? Yeah, and what are you doing? To allow God to do God's work. Right. To renew your mind. Right. Yeah. The other one that stands out to me is practice hospitality. Mm -hmm. Practice, not think about it. How are you going to do it? Practice, live it. Right. Um, and I like the practice means we might not always get it right. <laughs> you know, when you're practicing something, you're learning and, oh, you know, it's not perfect yet. You're still practicing it. Right. Well, one of the things we learned in, in, a, in about leadership this last week when we were off-site, some of us were off-site, um, you, you learn in the crucible of life. Mm -hmm. You can read all the books that you want um, and have knowledge and maybe have a plan, but you don't really learn it until you're vulnerable and living it in life. Mm -hmm. that's the learning mm -hmm. yep. that's when the that's when the transformation that's when those kinds of things happen in the doing in the living of it mm -hmm. well they always say as a as a writer or or a creative of some sort your first song will suck like the first song you write will not be good there's just there's just really no way to do it but you got to get it out you got to go through that process of you to start to write it. a song and finishing it. And then you go to your next one. Hopefully your next one is better. And then the one after that is better. And, and um, I, I can speak for myself. Sometimes that that's a little paralyzing. The idea of like, well, I want to make sure it's really good. I remember in college, we had to do an orchestration uh, and write like a hymn arrangement 
that the rest of the class would play. So everyone would bring their instruments. And so like, it's, it's a 16 bar hymn arrangement. It's nothing complicated, but at, you know, 18 or 19, it, it is the most important thing I've ever done, you know? And so I remember. <laughs> we'll and, ever do. That's right. <laughs> and they will remember it forever. Um, and, and I just, I just remember being so nervous for that. And then at the end I was like, no, oh, okay. That was it. You know, like, and, and we build up, we build up these things about like how, how are we supposed to, to do it? But we practice, we mm-hmm. get in the rhythm, we mm-hmm. fail, we, um, and then we learn. And if we do it in good faith and, and, and good intentions, then we, mm-hmm. we, 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 we're open. The community can support that. But yeah, for me, that is a, that is a, um, fail big, fail often, and then move on. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah that, that was hospitality piece. Oh, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Jill. In that hospitality piece, when you think of us as first Lutheran, we know our, we, we exist as a community of faith and we're, you're going to hear this a lot, um, First Lutheran folks, and I think I put in Devo, I hope it sinks into our DNA, that we exist to bring people, connect people with God and to connect people with each other. So this practice of hospitality is a vital piece mm-hmm of who we are Mm -hmm. um, as a church. And it's through hospitality, practicing hospitality, Mm -hmm. that we can bring people to God, invite people to connect with God, and then to connect Mm -hmm. with each other. And I think a big part of that too, what what he really hits here is um, talks over and over again about those who don't have reach out to those that, you know, that don't have reach out to the poor it, that keeps coming through again and again. And we are a homeless and hungry church. Mm-hmm. So that's part of who we identify with um, as a part of community and what we're doing. And I think about feed my starting children um, and, and what mm-hmm. we are doing as a church. Um, and, you know, I'm just so happy to say that we have, far exceeded the numbers that we had planned. I have called and asked for more space and more space and people are really stepping out and stepping up. And it's just beautiful because that is hospitality and it's who we are as a church. Well, I think this uh, whole chapter is a very good exhortation on what it means to be better together, what it means to live together in view of God's mercy. And he, uh, I just want, before we depart here, There's three times where Paul mentions the thing that's going to get in the way of that happening. And one is in verse three. um, Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. And then in verse 15, do not be proud and do not be conceited. Pride is the thing that gets into our uh, in our way of truly becoming better together and working together as a church and in community. So I just wanted mm-hmm. to end with that note. Any other thoughts or thoughts on that? Beautiful All said. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you again, um, everyone, for participating and uh, for listening. And we hope that you've been blessed by this. And... Uh, well, I'm going to ask Polly if you would close us in prayer, and then we will be on our way. All right. Oh, good and gracious Lord, thank you for this time together to um, share um, conversation about your word, about Paul's word for us, about what this means for us as individuals and as a church, to remind us, Lord, that through you, We are renewed when we rest in you. We are renewed through interactions and relationships with one another, and we're renewed by reaching out to others who are in need um, and using our gifts and talents as you have given them to us. So, Lord, please be with us. Um, Remind us of your good news and um, care for us as we care for others. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. All right. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Bye. Bye.